ride like the wind. The heroes of motorsport have always been fast movers. And the higher the speed, the greater the physical force. The tougher the fight for the ideal line. Aerodynamics, a recurring theme in motor racing history. With a fast flow of new ideas constantly being tried. The spirit of innovation and invention remains unbridled to this day. For anyone who wants to get ahead in the race for fractions of a second, has to keep studying airflow science anew. Das Thema Aerodynamik ist in der modernen Formel Aerodynamics is possibly the most important issue of all in modern Formula One. Of course, the car has to be robust. Of course, it has to be light, but it also has to be aerodynamically efficient. The vehicle's nose is the point that meets the air first. From then on, the airflow must swirl as little as possible and always be guided in the direction in which it fulfills the desired purpose. No turbulence may be produced and the air mustn't slow the car down. Instead it's channeled to the rear wing by air deflectors and side panels adjusted with millimeter precision. It's also led through the radiators and beneath the underbody. This all produces downforce that presses the car onto the track and thus enables short braking distances and high cornering speeds. Well, you always need downforce in Formula One, and uh, the the uh, makes the car go very, very quick if you get the downforce right and the what we call efficiency. So the car is very quick around the corners, but also quick in the straights, and uh, that's the most important thing and the hardest thing for the aerodynamics to get right uh, to get it absolutely perfect. The key to success: permanent data analysis in the wind tunnel and via CFD simulations. 80% of grip comes from the car's aerodynamics, the rest from the tires. Narrow street circuits or high-speed tracks, the teams create specific models with the optimum setup for each Grand Prix. A hundred different settings for the front wing alone, 20 for the rear. On the race weekend, the car is adjusted to the driver's own driving style. Fine-tuning, non-stop calculations for the engineers. The front wing produces about 25% of the downforce, the diffuser 40% and the rear wing 35. It, however, also causes the most drag. It is the case that if you have more drag you go slower on the straights, but it's in most circuits the gain, particularly hot tracks where tyre suffers in the heat, having more downforce to go quickly around the corners often is a better choice for the race so it is always a compromise between top speed and tyre degradation and lap time so that, that is what you're always weighing one against the other and different people have different opinions about what the optimum should be. All a matter of setup, including for overtaking sucking in really close and then pulling past is getting increasingly difficult the rear of the car in front causes turbulent, dirty air. For the pursuer, this means a third less downforce and unsettled balance. Adjustable aerodynamic components could correct this, but they're banned. Airflow science up against a rule book headwind. The rear wings at one time used to be about the most efficient thing on the car. So when you put less wing on the car, you actually were running at a poorer efficiency at the fast tracks, but you had to do it to go fast on the straights. Whereas nowadays, it's not the case. The, the car itself generates quite a lot of downforce. So at the tracks where you put a small wing, the efficiency is higher. But it really is a rule-dependent thing. It isn't a natural physical phenomenon. Um, Monza would be, if you go back 30 years, Monza would have had a low aerodynamic efficiency, uh, whereas now it has a high. Aerodynamics in Formula One, the search for the perfect streamline shape. Always the answer too to the question, who knows which way the wind blows and who can ride it the fastest.